Right, you guys got another video here for you. Is it now time to upgrade to Windows 11? I'm going to give you 10 reasons not to upgrade to Windows 11. And these are just my personal uh, opinions. OK, but before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, click on this one and then you can uh, see we'll bit the buy now page. Hit the buy now button. Put in my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order to get a juicy discount. Once you click apply, it will be reduced down to $16.41. Submit your order and then activate your version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro. So first off, let's start off with number one, which is Microsoft have not removed their hardware requirements for Windows 11. Computers will need to have an 8th gen Intel or a Zen 2 AMD CPU with TPM 2.0 chip. Also, the CPU will need to support Secure Boot. This means a lot of computers will be obsolete in three years' time. Officially, you need to buy a new PC for Windows 11 if your hardware is not supported. You can see here, you'll run a check on your system and basically you'll get this message saying your computer is not supported if you're running older hardware. And 8th gen is not that old. And also AMD uh, Gen uh, 2 or Zen 2 is not that old either. And a lot of people are going to feel a little bit let down by Microsoft. And I thought they might relax this a little bit over the coming uh, months, but they haven't. And they've stood uh, hard and fast about this rule and they won't remove it. So that's one of my biggest uh, problems with Windows 11. Number two, Windows 11 is still buggy. There is lots of bugs that are with Windows 11 and it just lacks polish. Everything you see here is just unfinished. It's just not been uh, finished before release and uh, they're constantly upgrading this and updating it to fix a lot of known issues. You can't do a lot of things on here that you can do on Windows 10. And I think what they did was they just released this uh, version of Windows 11, which was really Windows 10. It's missing a lot of key features and they're adding these with each release and they're going down to, you know, one update a year. So you're going to have to wait quite a while before you get some of these features. And even when they release these features, uh, they're just not finished. And this is the biggest problem for me with Windows 11. Now, also, it's full of bloatware. They just add loads of bloat in here. You can see Instagram and Messenger and TikTok, uh, Prime Video, uh, loads of applications are added inside here. And they've also got loads of areas uh, which you have to go through to disable. And it's just this privacy and security area. And there's just tons of it. And uh, you just, no one really uses this. I don't know anyone who actually uses a lot of this stuff apart from microphone and camera. Everything else they're just turning off. And they just don't let you opt out of it. And they're just forcing you to go through this whole uh, palaver every single time. And then when you get an update, it all resets itself and you have to go through the whole procedure again. So four steps and telemetry and widgets and other stuff that they keep adding is just a big no-no for me. Number three is the Windows 10 taskbar is just way better than the Windows 11 taskbar. You can do more to the taskbar in Windows 10 than you can on Windows 11. You're still having issues with drag and drop on here. You can't uh, change the size of it. You can't put it at certain places like the top or things like that. It's just they want you to either have it in the center here or on the left hand side. And they're not giving you any sort of uh, way of changing this. And they're sticking to what they want with their taskbar. It just looks very big and ugly. And I just don't like it. Moving on to number four is Windows 11 requires you to sign into a Microsoft account even when you don't want to. So, for instance, when you're installing a Windows 11 on a computer, it's going to force you to sign into a Microsoft account, which is this here. Now, you can go back to a local account, but during the installation process, they seem to be making it more and more difficult to bypass the local account option and forcing you to sign in. Now, even though we do have a lot of workarounds, you shouldn't have to do that. 
and uh, basically you should have the option to sign into a local account if you want to rather than being forced into signing into a Microsoft account. And even on the pro versions of Windows, they're starting to remove that option where you can just sign into a local account and they're going to be forcing people with Windows pro versions to sign into their Microsoft account during the installation process. Now, I know there's workarounds for this. I've made videos on that in the past, but you shouldn't have to do it. Next up, we're talking about the next pet hate I don't like about Windows 11, and it's this ridiculous context menu. It's an absolute joke. It really is. It's massive, and it just loads and loads of clicks. I mean, what is that? I mean, you can fix it with uh, adding a program to your computer, which is called Start 11 or Start All Back, and it fixes this. There is some um, registry hacks you can do to try to bring it back to the way it was before. Now, if it just works, then why change it? I mean, just adding that GUI pack to Windows has probably caused so many problems, but just to make it look nice. And this ribbon up here as well, they've changed this completely. I don't like the uh, copy, paste, and the rename uh, icons either, but it's just me. That's just my opinion. So this context menu... It's not for me, and I would install Start 11 or Start All Back to fix this. So number six, staying with the theme of Start Menus and Context Menus, is this hideous uh, Start Menu. I mean, look at the size of that. It's just massive, and you can't do anything with it. It's just horrible. This recommended section here I don't like. Yeah, you can turn it off, but then it's just a big blank void down the bottom here. It's just, I know you can customize this area here, but I just don't like the look of this start menu uh, the way it is. Some people may disagree. Uh, I just don't like it. It seems that you have to go clicking on things to find stuff, whereas the old menu used to work really well. And for some reason, uh, this is uh, their new uh, invention for a start menu. I would much more prefer to use something like start 11 or start all back for Windows 11. This makes the whole experience for Windows 11 a lot more enjoyable. So if you are on Windows 11 and you want to get back to some sort of control where you have a, a better experience, then use something like Start All Back or Start 11. And this will change the uh, Start menu and also the taskbar and the context menu. And it just makes Windows 11 a lot more usable and a lot more user friendly. They're not free, but they only cost around about five pounds or five dollars uh, to purchase, and it's well worth the the investment. Okay, so let's move on to number seven, which is the menu system inside Windows 11. It's overcomplicated, and it takes more clicks to get to a location of your choice. So what I mean by that is they are going to start removing all of this legacy. Uh, options to get to the legacy part this is where they're going to start forcing you uh, to get into and you're going to have to start coming down here and then going into the more sound settings just to get to this area here so before you could just right click eventually they're going to remove all this the audio uh, uh, down here is absolutely horrible you can use that trumpet to make this a lot more controllable uh, but again it is really not for me and uh I find myself going in here and you're getting lost. You go in here and you think, where is this? And you click on this and you have to click on another thing. It just takes forever to find things, in my opinion. Yes, it looks more polished, but, you know, simplicity. Uh, if it just works the way before, why change it? All they could do is just add a GUI pack to Windows 10 and their problems would have been solved. And believe it or not, I believe that's what their main intention was in the first place was to give Windows 10 a facelift. And then they realized that they could just push this out as Windows 11 and obviously uh, sell this to the consumer, which is the user. And then obviously, uh, eventually, people would think it's a new operating system. And really, it is Windows 10, which leads me on to number eight, which is Windows 11 is Windows 10 in disguise. A lot of people keep classing Windows 11 as a new operating system. Microsoft haven't recoded a new operating system in many, many years. They're still using part of the old code for all the old operating systems that you see, even inside Windows 11. When they first released Windows 11, there was lots of areas that actually said Windows 10 on them instead of Windows 11. 
And that's because the main core uh, code for Windows 11 is Windows 10. And you can still see it in Windows 11. They're just trying to hide it. So let's go into Control Panel. And you can see this is the old version of Windows. It's still built in here. Eventually, they'll probably get rid of this or they'll give it some sort of facelift. But inside here, you can uh, have a look. There is old features in here, like for this one here. Back up and restore Windows 7. That means this is from Windows 7. They've still got code in here from Windows 7, and it's in Windows 11, which tells me a lot of this stuff is uh, still hanging on uh, from past operating systems. So let's talk about number nine, which is rumors of Windows 12. You can see here Windows 11 is nowhere near finished yet, and yet they're already talking about Windows 12. And there's rumors circulating on the internet from reliable sources to say that they're going to be releasing Windows 12 in sometime in 2024, early 2024, which is, you know, unthinkable really when you think that a lot of people are still on Windows 10. They haven't even upgraded to Windows um, 11. And Windows 11 is nowhere near finished. So there's even rumors saying that they are even looking at releasing operating systems every three years. So what does that mean for you? Well, it just means that if you've got a PC that's unsupported for Windows 11, you could be ended up uh, buying a newer computer quicker than what you wanted to. And that leads me to number 10, which is Android apps is nowhere near finished yet. And they're already talking about releasing another operating system by uh, 2024. I mean, these are rumors, and uh, sometimes these rumors are pretty accurate. So that's a bit worrying. So they're my 10 things, and there's probably a few other ones in there which I could add, but I think these are the 10 most common ones that are uh, causing concern for me. Now, if you're still hesitant, uh, there is no real reason to upgrade to Windows 11 right away. Windows 10 uh, still has another three years, uh, so I don't think they're going to change that. I think it still will go until uh, 2025. So you can still use it up until 2025, Windows 10. But after that point, uh, that is going to be it. That will be the end of the life cycle for Windows 10, especially if Windows 12 is true. I don't think they'll extend that any further. And that will be, you know, pretty devastating to a lot of people. So other than that, there is no rush. You can still use Windows 10 for a number of years yet and then make your decision then. If they're going to bring uh, Windows 12 out in, uh, say, for instance, 2024, then maybe skip Windows 11 and go straight to Windows 12 with a new computer. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. That is my 10 reasons not to upgrade to Windows 11. I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. I just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I do appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.